Oh, hi there. My name's Rose Davey, and I'd like to talk about Artemisia Gentileschi's self-portrait as allegory of painting from 1630. So here we see Artemisia simultaneously represent herself as the artist and as the allegory of painting, traditionally represented by a woman. So for once, Artemisia could take advantage of her sex. Whereas male artists wanting to raise the status of painting in the 17th century wanted to present themselves as noblemen or men who pursued intellectual pastimes through the process of painting. But in order to identify themselves as painting, they needed the necessary studio paraphernalia to surround them like brushes and canvas and paint. And this was in danger of lowering their status again to craft by having these manual tools around them. Whereas Artemisia sidestepped this problem due to her sex. We observe the process of transformation from figure to ground. We see the artist lean out into the light. Her right hand is poised with paintbrush about to begin. Her left hand is sandwiched between the palette where we can see a few blobs of paint and the table upon which it rests. In her left she also or some brushes which she is likely to use later. Her right supports the concept as it is received through the eyes, processed with the mind, and her left supports the medium which will record her visual ideas upon the canvas. Artemisia's use of colour demonstrates the impact of restraint. Really we just have this beautiful green which is seen within her sleeves. We also see some violets that kind of run through it. They almost shimmer across the fabric. And here, this is Artemisia showing off, showing a virtuoso technique, which displayed a painter's talent. This green is complemented with the ochre tones of her dress, which also kind of lead up into the blank canvas and are picked up also in the chain and the pendant. Again, a nod to the allegory of painting around her neck. There's a painting of lightness and darkness. Her skin receives the light. It's almost luminous as she looks towards her subject but seems to radiate back at her. And then her hair is this dark kind of unruly mass that almost disappears into shadow. The thing that really excites me about this painting is the shapes that the body creates and the space that they form. Space is used as an equal collaborator to form. The painter's outstretched arms kind of create this void or this space within the canvas. And Artemisia is not afraid to leave these huge areas of blank space. Like all great painters, she knows exactly what to do with it and how to use blankness, negative space alongside positive space. Also, this foreshortened figure is so unusual. When you witness this painting, in a room among many others, it stands out for the severity of the angle of the face. If anyone's done life drawing, you know how hard it is when a figure is at an extreme angle. You really need to fragment or abstract your vision in order to accurately record what it is you see rather than what you think you see. And Artemisia does this brilliantly. Her body creates these kind of interlocking shapes of figure and then of space that almost create this yin and yang, which work fantastically well within the confines of the canvas. Half of the painting is the artist, full of creativity and concept. The other half of the painting is blank canvas, which is the vessel, the legacy of the artist's visual ideas which are about to be recorded. Artemisia also uses the actual weave of the canvas she paints upon to illustrate the depicted canvas she includes within the painting. So we've got this sense of the illusionary and the real going on at the same time. The inclusion of the canvas moments from activation is also enthralling. We are about to see the canvas itself go from the material to the metaphysical. Material. Metaphysical. Just a few moments away from a few touches of paint which will initiate osmosis. Artemisia is also showing us the very beginnings of the painting. 
whilst also showing us the conclusion as we gaze upon the whole image. How clever, how clever to show us the beginning and the end, two time frames, two realities within one painting. Surely this work must have inspired many others. Diego Velasquez visited Artemisia in her studio in Naples in 1630. They were working for the same patron. And Artemisia writes a letter three days after Velasquez leaves, where she mentions this painting, or likely mentions this painting. Mary Garrard, the great Artemisia biographer, makes the connection between Artemisia's allegory of painting and Velasquez's Las Meninas. So why compare Las Meninas to Artemisia's allegory of painting? Well, because she shows us the artist at work without revealing the subject. She leaves mystery and intrigue, and she understands the power of concealing what it actually is that the artist is painting, what the artist is gazing upon. Velasquez takes this a step further. Velasquez looks out towards his subject, but the subject is us, the viewer. Yet all the other figures in the painting seem to have their attention suddenly diverted to the entrance of the king and queen, who we can see reflected in the mirror behind. So is the subject us? Are we the king and queen? Or is the subject the painting that we gaze upon? Similarly to Artemisia's allegory of painting, are we witnessing her making the work that we gaze upon? It never diminishes the quality of a work if you can trace its concept and ideas back to a previous work. As my art teacher used to say, if you're going to copy someone's idea, just make sure you do it better. It doesn't really matter if this painting inspired Las Meninas or not, because what we are left with is a fantastic work, and it shows the painter at task. Poised, paintbrush in hand, completely focused, fixated on her subject matter as she begins to record what it is that has caught her eye. This work is really the qualification of a person as an artist. It shows the artist as someone who has the ability to recognize universal truth within the world, and then to also record that truth to be preserved for future generations. I just hope that Artemisia finally gets the recognition she deserves, because this work is supremely confident in its use of formal structure, of light, of colour and of concept. Nice one, Artemisia.